Hello, I'm Rob Miller, husband to Nancy Julia Miller. As most of you know, she passed away on August 9th this year, and this is the celebration of her life. I'd like to start off this evening by talking about a Bible verse, John 14, 1 through 3. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know, when we get to the older ages, we start to think as Christians, what was God's plan for me? Am I following it? Am I doing what I need to do? Over the last few, several weeks after Nancy passed, I heard from many of you and how she touched your lives. And I know from some of that, it tells me that she did follow God's plan and she is with him today. I'd like to have a little prayer. Well, Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity that I've had and others have had to have Nancy in their lives. She blessed us with so many wet things in so many ways. She was a soft-spoken person. She was basically an introvert. But in so many ways, she touched people through books with children, through crafts with adults, and just as a friend. She was such a person that we all loved, and I thank you for that. I and some others do hope that we are reunited with her someday. She is my beloved spouse. I pray that I'll be able to worship you with her through eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to thank all of you for your prayers, your concerns, your sympathies. You helped me remember how special Nancy was. Nancy Miller was born September 26, 1951 in Macon, Georgia to Paul and Nan Turner. During those early years, they lived in Cary, North Carolina. She started first grade there. They didn't have kindergarten. She was five years old. But quickly moved, they moved on to Texas and settled in the Spring Branch area of Houston where she grew up. She was a Girl Scout, as you can see. And when she went to Springwoods High School, she was in their varsity volleyball team for several years. In her senior year, they were runner-up in the state meet, came in second in girls volleyball, and she said her knees were never the same. Nancy uh, survived by two brothers. Paul lives in Alabama, retired Army. Robert lives in the Fort Worth area. He has two sons, I'm sorry, three sons, two daughter-in-laws, and three grandchildren. Nancy became very close to my side, my daughter, Michelle, my two granddaughters, Brooke and Ashley, and we have a great grandchild, Rowan. Nancy loved to tell the story about how she became a librarian. During her senior year in high school, she, <clears throat> her mother thought it would be a good idea if they talked to the school counselor. So, they got an appointment, and Nancy and her mother walked into the school counselor's office. And of course, the counselor asked, well, Nancy, what's your plans after you graduate from high school? And Nancy looked at her mother, and her mother looked at her, and really didn't know. And so the counselor opened up a drawer in his file cabinet, pulled out a brochure. He says, Sam Houston State College has a great librarian program. Oh, 
And so later that year, Nancy and her mother took a drive up to Sam Houston College in Huntsville, Texas. And when I got out of the car, onto the campus lawn, her mother noticed all these white men in uniform looking around. They saw them cleaning out the gardens, mowing the lawns, and so forth. And Nan said, Nancy, this has got to be a real special place. Even the lawn gardeners wear white uniforms. Of course, later Nan found out there were actually prisoners at Huntsville State Prison, and they were just there as they were stationed there to help keep the lawns up. Nancy's mother was quite the storyteller, and that that uh, all those family stories and everything she passed down to Nancy. Nancy grew up watching her mother cook, and she'd tell these stories. And Nancy learned how to cook from her mother, and you know that was one of the things that Nancy loved to talk about was her relationship with her mother and all those family stories. Nancy started her teaching career at, in Aldine ISD in the Houston area here. She taught and worked at three different schools. She taught fourth grade one year and the rest of her 30 year career was as a librarian, pretty much. Most of that time in Aldine, she worked at McGrill Elementary where she made so many friends. <clears throat> and she loved to read books to children and teach them things through books. She made bulletin boards, you know, and each bulletin board was a teaching bulletin board. And as I was going through all her stuff, I found all these binders. They had pictures of bulletin boards with instructions in them, all in those <clears throat> plastic paper containers, binders of them. Nancy also wrote a monthly newsletter to the staff at her schools. It's called Serendipity. And each one of those newsletters newsletters was in a sheet protector too in several different binders. She was very organized. If you saw her quilt room, she'd have these plastic boxes full of projects she started or projects she was going to start. They were all labeled, they had directions in them, and many of them had all the materials needed to start that project. There's probably 30, 40 of those boxes in there. Well, and during all that time, at McGrill, she made lots of friendships, and several of those folks that she worked there shared stories. This one comes from Judy Hansen. Nancy and I were lucky. We were assigned as roommates our freshman year at Sam Houston State College. One of the most vivid memories I have of our freshman year is of a food fight we had with several other girls on our hall. It all started one night when we were visiting another room and were having snacks. Peanuts and popcorn were thrown. Peanut butter and dip were rubbed in faces. And when Nancy and I tried to retreat to our room, lemonade was poured under our door. Well, I had a jar of pickles, so I poured all the pickle juice under their door. They added some cleaning liquid to the mix, and we had to stop when we fell in the mess on the floor. Someone not involved had gone down to the dorm leader to complain about the noise, and so we did get reprimanded. I also remember during our sophomore year, the two of us going to the student union to have enough peace and quiet to work on our Spanish homework. We had both taken Spanish four years in high school, and it took both of us to get her through a year of college Spanish. In 1974, she let me crash on her couch when I filed for divorce from my first husband. A few weeks later, we were roommates again in a two-bedroom, two-bath apartment. Frieda Frazier, another friend of McGrill, wrote, I remember the first year Nancy became the librarian at McGrill. She and I went to school a few days early and found a treasure trove of books in cabinets. And then the new books for the current year arrived. There were books everywhere. Nancy was so excited to start the new year off and we read every book and processed them to be shelved. She planned sets of books for each grade level and they were ready to go once children were in school. She had such a love of books and sharing this with students and teachers. Nancy never asked anyone to do any more work than she did. I could not keep up with her. 
Her love of reading to the students and helping them pick out a book they would enjoy was amazing. She made story time a wonderful time for each class. I will always have special memories of being her coworker and friend. <laughs> Ann Kiner said, oh Rob, there are so many good times Nancy and I shared for several years in the library at McGrill. I enjoyed being her aide and she taught me many things as we spent a lot of time together. As I sat at her desk checking out books, I was able to enjoy her reading to the classes. She was so animated and had homemade and she bought props to go with the lessons. The kids were so entertained. She always made my family favorite homemade cake. Chocolate with cocoa icing for my birthday. Yummy. Nancy always gave me the perfect birthday gift with my interest in mind. To this day, I still enjoy them. We even took a quilting class together at It's a Stitch in Humboldt. Of course, she was so talented to move on to make more elaborate wall hangings and quilts. If I remember right, she even made her wedding invitation in calligraphy. Nancy was so creative and talented. Yes, she did. About a month before her passing, I made another one of her recipes, recipes, Blueberry Delight. It was for my game group of ladies, and I told them it was Nancy's recipe. They all loved it. I know you miss her so much and were her best husband for her. I'm praying for your strength for God Almighty. Rest in peace, Nancy, my friend. Allie Albright wrote, when I was hired at McGrill in the early 80s, Nancy and I became fast friends because of mutual love of books. We were both early arrivals at school and we would sit at the teacher's lounge, Nancy eating her can of mandarins and me with a stack of children's books to share with her. Her love for children's literature was infectious and she taught me so much about books, authors, and how to incorporate books into my daily lessons. She truly made me a better teacher. Nancy knew how proud I was of my father and his remarkable woodworking talents. When he passed, she dedicated a signed copy of The Carpenter to my dad and displayed it in the library. She probably never knew how much that meant to me. This was a perfect example of her thoughtfulness and kindness. The world has lost a kind soul, a caring educator, and a friend to me. You know, Nancy's infectious with teaching teachers how to use books and everything really helped me. At the time we met, I was teaching fifth grade and I started getting into this thing about using books with children. On Friday nights, we'd go over to Bookstop in 1960, sit on the floor there, look at children's books and see what we could afford to buy and how we were going to use them for our lessons. She made me such a better teacher and the kids became better disciplined because of it. And I so appreciate that. Well, in 2001, McGrill got a new principal and Nancy really didn't like that new principal. And I said, well, Nancy, I'm working over here in Magnolia ISD. At the time I was director of technology. I said, why don't you come over? I'll see if we can get you a job. So the superintendent found her a job doing sub substitute calling. And so her office was right next to mine for those few months, but later they found her a job as an element, or as a junior high um, librarian, and she worked at that school for a couple years before she reached her 30 years and retired. And when she retired, she became, she went to work part-time at It's a Stitch at Umbo, you know, helping in the quilt shop. She loved it. She got a 25% discount. And so she got to buy lots of stuff you should just so I've seen her quilt room, what it looked like with all that stuff. A lot of it came from, from there. One of the people she worked with was named Phyllis Peterson. And Phyllis wrote, I worked with Nancy all those years at It's a Stitch. Her presence always made me, made my day a happier day. Always a smile and a happy heart. She loved sharing stories about her favorite man. I loved seeing her again when she came to my house to pick up three Mima dolls that she wanted to buy for little nieces and so we had you know uh, three little nieces and a great granddaughter and and, and so forth and uh, Phyllis was selling these dolls on Etsy. Nancy found out said, wow those are kind of cool so she went over there and bought three and Phyllis said you know she, 
She had great taste. She picked my favorite three dolls. I'm so sorry she has been called away much too early. I'm glad she had such a loving partner to share her life with. It was obvious she was a happy lady and I will miss knowing she was alive, well, and living her best life ever. Well, you know, Nancy and I met in 1985 uh, at church, Northwoods Presbyterian Church down in 1960 here in Spring, Texas. We were in a singles group. And that was a very active singles group. We got together in groups, people's houses every couple of weeks and did different things and church projects, you know, painting people's homes and so all kinds of things. And so I said, hey, you know, I need to take that girl out. And so I took Nancy out on a date after church. We went to a movie and had dinner. And after that, I said, that is the woman for me. So we developed a strong relationship together. I wanted to get married right away. No, nope. she says we gotta wait. So 10 months later, October 2nd, 1986, we got married. She planned the whole wedding, did it on the cheap. She made all the decorations and so forth. You know, she did, did the <clears throat> wedding announcement and invitations, you know, all in her calligraphy hand and so forth. Did the whole thing under a thousand dollars. I bet very few of you can say that. A few years into our marriage, Nancy and I started talking about maybe fostering children. Nancy was 30, she had cancer and lost the ability to have children. And so I thought this might be one opportunity uh, for us to get close to kids and help a child out. And so a young boy, about seven years old, came and lived with us for about a year. <clears throat> he really enriched our lives and and, and so forth and then when his mother got better she was able to take him back and after he left us after that year <clears throat> we would um, talk to him on the phone hadn't been see him again but we talked to him on the phone every now and then and his mother moved from one place to another and eventually we lost contact with him and so <clears throat> Nancy had put his picture up on our uh, refrigerator and thinking that uh, you never know, maybe someday we'll see him. In 2010, Nancy was working at the quilt shop one Saturday morning. I was out running errands, and when I came back home from running those errands, my neighbor came up to me and he says, hey, someone was knocking on your door. So I went over and asked him what was going on. And he said, uh, well, I just, uh, just to see if they're home. The Miller still live here? Yeah. And so he wrote his name, his name, his, his number, not his name, on a piece of paper and gave it to my neighbor. And my neighbor gave me that piece of paper. And of course, I really thought, I'll bet you that's Brandon. Gave the phone number a call, and it was Brandon. And since then, we developed this great relationship with him. At that time, he was actually living in Illinois. He's moved down here to this area. And uh, also a relationship with his, uh, his sister, too. And so that's really enriched our lives, and I think we've been an asset to them, too. And so as she moved away from the teaching in the library, she got more and more involved in crafts. Well, actually, in the late, early 90s, she got into quilting and so forth, and then she got away from the classroom, this whole thing with crafting. She had more time working part-time at It's a Stitch. She got into more crafting and all kinds of crafts, you know, we did things with wood, we did <clears throat> bonsai trees, pruning bonsai trees, that was a recent one. Uh, <clears throat> she got into card making, you know, not only quilting, just one thing, cross stitch, all these different types uh, of art that she got involved in. And she had all the tools for it all too. One of the favorite things that she made was this, this piece right here. And the story behind this, when I uh, became hardware planning coordinator for the technology department in uh, Cypress Fairbanks. She says, you know, I'd like to make a quilt hanging for your, your wall in your office. And she looked at the carpet and the colors in the room and everything. So she started planning it out and she found, came up with this idea of these little characters building this computer and everything. And a couple of years later, Nancy, my office has changed. The colors are different. And so she had to get out different material to go with it and all this. And she'd work on it a little bit. And then she'd go get on something else. 
In 2000, no, 1997, I went over to Magnolia ISD as technology director and Nancy, my office is different. So she'd go get the material to go with the colors in there. In 2001, my office changed again. I says, Nancy, you better get this thing done so you don't have to buy more material for the quilt hanging that you're going to do for my office. So somewhere around 2006, 2007, she gave me this beautiful wall hanging hung in my office till I retired and then well, it hangs in this home here. She loved making gifts for people. She made baby quilts for all the new babies in our family. Just about every family member one time or another got something like this, some type of comforter, you know, or some other, made with some other kind of uh, <clears throat> medium. Christmas, we made Christmas Gifts. This was last year's. We made Lazy Susans for the, old, the family. I think we made like 12 of them. All done differently. A lot of them had to do with the colors in their home or some theme with their interests in it. This year we were working on them here in July. You know, the 1st of August until she got sick. A lot of them are complete. Some of them are partially complete or she had the ideas for them. And I, I have finished them now, and our family will get those gifts, you know, with her touch on them this Christmas. She's quite a woman. Nancy has touched many people in many different ways, uh, as we've talked about. And <clears throat> one Mother's Day, she received a card, and it said, Six years ago, I cried out, Why? God works in mysterious ways. I now know why and I couldn't be more thankful for all God has brought into my life. You are one of those things. You feel the void in my life, and I thank you for that. I believe that a mother is not one that carries you for nine months or spends 24 hours in labor. Those things do not define a mother. A mother to me is one that loves you and cares for you unconditionally. A mother is someone that takes you into their hearts as if you have been in their life from the beginning. Thank you so much for being all these things. I love you always so much. I hope you feel special on this day. You deserve it. And uh, about nine years ago, we moved to a 55 and over community. Uh, lots of activities go on here, you know, people are our, our age and so forth. We have a beautiful clubhouse we got involved in. Nancy got together a, for one year a, a crafting group of ladies interested in crafts and they meet on once a week and they bring their crafts to work on and they talk through about different things to do with different crafts or how you do this or how you do that. She got involved, you know, went to all the garden club meetings and you know she took notes on everything so she's got you know notes on the speakers at the garden club and so forth and, and then she got involved with red hat and ladies bible study and so forth her her health really started to prevent her from doing a lot you know less energy couldn't walk more than 100 feet without having to sit down at times balance off at times and so forth. We got her a scooter to go on trips, uh, you know, a little travel scooter, so she wouldn't have to walk long distances. We've been all over. Uh, we've been to Hawaii twice, Alaska twice. Uh, we did a Panama cruise from Houston all the way up to Vancouver. We did a transatlantic cruise from London via Iceland and into Miami, several my cruises in the Caribbean. Cruises really worked for her because she could rest more, didn't have to change a hotel every night, that kind of a thing. And we had planned a cruise to uh, the Norwegian Fjords that we were going to do back in uh, April of 2020. And of course, that never happened. And uh, that got canceled. And we actually had planned another one for this upcoming October to do a Mediterranean cruise. But her health kept going down and down and down, and she didn't make that either. You know, she touched my life in so many ways. And I really didn't know the impact until she was gone. And reading the stories that you have shared with me, 
and the comments on Facebook and the emails and the letters and the cards and everything. I know she impacted so many lives in positive ways that God shines on her and he's taken her to his home and I'll get a chance to meet her again. To end this little discussion celebrating her life, there's about eight minutes of pictures and video I'd like to share with you. Take care and thank you. And decide how you want them. And what about if I put another one or two? Wait, oh, right this is here. a different one. Right this is my quilt and my teddy bear. And it, it, we finished it. Yesterday and last night, and sometime today, and we made mine and sister's shirt. My sister's shirt is right here, and here's her pants.